Let's uncover the secrets behind red tides. Recently, parts of the southern coast turned bright red due to red tides. When we collect that seawater and look at it under a microscope, what kinds of living things will we find? And why do people sprinkle yellow soil into the sea when red tides occur? So what exactly is a red tide? A red tide happens when plankton in the ocean multiply too much, turning the color of the water bright red. That's why it's also called a harmful algal bloom. Red tides occur for many reasons. For example, nutrient pollution from land runoff or rising sea temperatures. Together with a marine researcher, we took seawater samples and examined them right on the boat using a microscope. See this? That's plankton. You can spot more here, too. This amount is about the same as what you'd find in normal seawater. But when a red tide gets severe, you can find plankton packed in this densely. Impressive, right? But why is the sudden plankton boom dangerous? Red tides don't come from a single species. Many different kinds of plankton start multiplying. Most plankton are harmless, but some produce toxins, including paralytic, diuretic, and amnesic poisons. When those toxic plankton bloom, their toxins build up inside fish and shellfish in that area, sometimes causing mass die-offs. Even worse, if humans eat contaminated seafood, they can suffer poisoning symptoms too. Scary, isn't it? Right now, one of the most harmful plankton species affecting fishing farms is Cochlidinium polycricoides. Cochlidinium is a type of dinoflagellate, a plankton that swims using two flagella. Surprisingly, when multiple Cochlidinium cells gather together, they connect like a train, forming long chains and living as a group. They also have a special ability. They secrete mucus. When Cochlidinium multiply in large numbers, this mucus can cover the gills of farmed fish, making it hard for them to breathe and causing mass deaths. Terrifying, right? Next, we moved to the lab for a simple experiment. You've probably seen footage of people throwing yellow soil, or loess, into the sea to combat red tides, right? We decided to test what kind of effect it actually has. First, we dissolved chlorella powder in water to recreate a situation similar to a red tide. Then, we mixed yellow soil into the cloudy water. It didn't sink as fast as we expected, but as it gradually settled, the water started to become clearer. In some YouTube videos, you can see all the particles sinking almost instantly. But even after testing various concentrations, we couldn't reproduce such a dramatic result. Still, after waiting a bit longer, we saw the water slowly clear up as the yellow soil settled. That's because yellow soil has a sticky surface and is made of fine colloid particles. These particles bind with plankton in the water, forming clumps that then sink to the bottom together. Since yellow soil naturally washes into the sea with rain and has been used for years without major problems, it remains one of the most common methods used today to control red tides. Fascinating, right? We'll keep bringing you more stories about the amazing world of living things. That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. This was Fishy Science where we use science to uncover the mysteries of the strange and surprising.